Okay, in this video we're going to be finding critical points and then using the second derivative test to classify them or state that the second derivative test fails. This is multivariable calculus. This is assignment number three from uh, my calc CD class. So let's get started. So we have f of xy is equal to x squared plus y squared minus xy plus x. To find the critical points we need partial x and partial y, so let's go ahead and find partial x. So that's going to be uh, 2x and then minus y, right? Uh, minus y and then plus 1, sorry, right? So x squared gives us 2x, y squared goes away, negative xy gives us minus y, and then x gives us 1. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Partial y, x squared goes away, the derivative of y squared is 2y, the derivative of negative xy is negative x. So we're going to get partial y is 2y and then minus x. All right, to find critical points, we need both partial derivatives to equal zero. Or, or we're setting them equal to zero and solving. They could also be undefined, but that's clearly not gonna happen here. Um, so partial x equals zero, partial y equals zero, which means we're really looking at this scenario. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and solve this. If you're allowed to use a calculator, you could just use a calculator at this point, but uh, I'm gonna use this to say that x is equal to two y, and then I'm gonna go up to uh, this and substitute 2y for that x. So 2 times 2y and then minus y plus 1 is equal to 0. We can solve this. We'll get 3y is equal to 1 and therefore y is negative 1 third. If y is equal to negative 1 third and x is equal to 2y, then x is equal to negative 2 thirds. So we have our critical point. Our critical point is negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third. Now we need to do the second derivative test or the second partial derivatives test. So that uh, is gonna require partial xx, partial yy, and partial xy. It also kind of requires partial yx, but in every context in which we use this, partial xy and partial yx are gonna be equal by Clairaut's theorem, I think is what it was called. Um, so partial xx, that's the derivative of partial x with respect to x. So partial x is two x minus y plus one, the derivative of that with respect to x is just two. Partial y, y is the derivative of partial y with respect to y, which is gonna give us two. And then we need partial x, y, which is the derivative of partial x with respect to y, which gives negative one. And if you look, the derivative of partial y with respect to x is also negative one. So we get this. We need to calculate d. So d is gonna be uh, partial xx times partial yy minus quantity partial xy squared. It's really minus partial xy times partial yx, but as I mentioned, partial xy and yx are going to be equal, so we're not doing it. Uh, substitute in. In this case, they're, they're all constants, so uh, this will be definitive. We don't need to like sub in the critical point. We just sub in these. We end up getting 3 for d, which is greater than zero. If d is greater than zero, we also need to know if partial xx is greater than or less than zero, or you could do it with partial yy. So I'm gonna use partial xx because, well, they're the same, they're both two. But I'm gonna say, um, since d is greater than zero and partial xx is greater than zero, we have a relative minimum at this point. So once you know that d is positive, it literally becomes like the calc one second derivative test where you just have to know, are you concave up or are you concave down? So we know that the trace in uh, parallel to the x-axis is uh, concave up, so you must be at a minimum. So we have a relative minimum, that's the first question. Let's look at the next one. We have, uh, so this is number 11 f of xy is 4x minus 3x cubed minus 2xy squared. All right, so again, we need partial x. So partial x is going to be 4 minus 9x squared minus 2y squared. So already you can see this might not be great, depending on how this goes. Uh, we need partial y. Partial y is going to just be negative 4xy. Right, uh, 4x goes away because there's no y, negative 3x cubed goes away because there's no y, and then negative 2x is a coefficient, so you have negative 2x times 2y, so negative 4xy. To get our critical points, we set both partial derivatives equal to zero, 
and we want to solve this. So we have a system of equations here. Um, I'm gonna start with partial y. So negative four x y equals zero means uh, that if we have this, either x is zero or y is zero. So you do have to be really careful when you're solving these and like think about what's really happening. So I'm gonna take x equals zero and this equation, if x is equal to zero, we just get four minus two y squared is equal to zero, which would mean that um, y squared is equal to two, which means y is plus or minus the square root of two. So that gives us two ordered pairs. It gives us zero root two and zero negative root two. You have to keep track of that. Now, if y is equal to zero, let's go back up to this equation again. Um, and we will plug in y equals zero, which gives us four minus two minus nine x squared equals zero. And then uh, subtract four, divide by negative nine. So you have x squared is four ninths. Square root this thing and we get x is plus or minus two thirds. So this gives us two ordered pairs. You get two thirds zero and negative two thirds zero. So overall, our critical points are these four and we have to test them. So I'm gonna take these forward to the next screen and try to do that. So here goes. Our critical points, and we know partial x and partial y. So we need to calculate d, which means we need partial xx, partial yy, and partial xy. So partial xx is gonna be negative 18x, right? Derivative four is zero, negative nine x squared gives negative 18x. And the derivative of negative two y squared where x is the variable is zero. We need partial yy which is gonna be negative four x. Okay, and then we need uh, partial x, y, which is the same as partial y, x, so you can choose whichever one you want. Uh, you're gonna get, did I get this wrong? Partial, partial x, y, oh, partial x, y. I always look at the wrong thing. Look at partial y and find partial y, x, right? Partial y is negative four x, y. Find the derivative of that with respect to x, you get negative four y. Partial x is four minus nine x squared minus four y minus two y squared. Find the derivative of that with respect to y. The four goes away, the nine x squared goes away. Negative two y squared, the derivative is negative four y. So we got everything we need. So d, which is xx times yy minus xy squared, um, all partials, we can uh, plug it. So you have negative 18x times negative four x is 72x squared, and then minus uh, the quantity negative 4y squared, which is minus 16y squared. Now we gotta test these, it's pretty gruesome. Um, so I'm, I've written it out. Uh, at zero root two, I'm getting negative 32. You can confirm that by just plugging in uh, x is zero and y is root two. Uh, that is less than zero. If you get less than zero, you automatically have a saddle point. So since d is less than zero, we have a saddle point at here. Now we're gonna do the next point, zero negative root two. That also is gonna give you negative 32, which is also less than zero. That's another saddle point. Now we're gonna test um, two thirds zero. So two thirds zero, we're gonna plug in, we end up with uh, 72 times four over nine, which I didn't even bother to simplify because I just know that that's greater than zero. Um, so once you're greater than zero, you need to look at the sign of partial xx. If partial xx is greater than zero, then you have a minimum. If partial xx is less than zero, then you have a maximum. So if we take two thirds zero and plug it into partial xx, we definitely get a negative um, because partial xx is negative 18 times x. So partial xx is going to be less than zero. So we know that we have a max or a min. Since the trace is concave down, we must have a maximum. And then we're gonna do this again at this point. So uh, it evaluates the same uh, when you plug in to D because Y is equal to zero and then you're squaring X. Uh, partial XX in this case will be negative uh, 18 times negative two thirds. And negative 18 times negative two thirds is definitely positive. So we know that we have a max or a min, we know that the trace is concave up, which means we must have a minimum. And there you go. I mean, these can be kind of a lot of work. Uh, I'm gonna do number 19 out of order. And why am I doing that? I'm doing 19 out of order because 
Did I have a reason for that? It might be because 15 is going to be its own video. Holy cow. I just looked at like the work that I did ahead of time for that. So I'm going to make 15 its own video. Uh, all right. So we are going to do number 19. This is out of order, uh, but for good reason. Uh, if you watch the next video, you'll know why. All right. So uh, f of xy is natural log of x plus 2 natural log of y minus x minus 4y. We need to find the critical points, which means we need partial x uh, and we need partial y. So the derivative of natural log of x is going to be 1 over x. 2 natural log of y might as well be a constant, so it's gone. Negative x gives you negative 1, and then negative 4y is gone. So we get 1 over x minus 1. And um, partial y. So partial y, same conversation. The derivative of natural log of x, gone. Uh, 2 natural log of y is going to give us 2 over, the na 2 over y, I should say. Uh, negative x is gone. Negative 4y is going to give us negative 4. So for critical points, we just need partial x equals 0, partial y to equal 0, um, or undefined. But anywhere these are undefined, which would be at x equals 0 or y equals 0, uh, f of xy is also undefined because uh, those are not in the domain of the natural log functions that we're dealing with. So we don't have to worry about that. We just want to solve these. Uh, you can kind of visually see, or you can work it out algebraically, that x will be 1. Um, and then I think you can also kind of visually see, or work it out algebraically, that y must be 1 half. Okay, so our ordered pair is 1 comma 1 half. That's our critical point. We need to now find partial xx, partial yy, and partial xy. xx is just going to be negative 1 over x squared. That's like a very normal derivative amongst all these. Uh, yy is going to give us negative 2 over y squared. And then xy and yx. So partial x has no y values in it. There's no variable y in it. So the derivative with respect to y is 0. Partial y has the same situation where there is no x. So the derivative with respect to x will just be 0. So either of those would have given us 0. And so now we know to calculate d, it's xx times yy minus xy squared. Because of that, uh, we can just plug in, right? We're going to find d of 1 comma 1 half. So if you plug uh, 1 into xx, you get negative 1. If you plug 1 half into yy, you get negative 8. And then you're just subtracting 0. Um, so overall, we get 8, which is greater than 0. So we either have a maximum or a minimum. Now we look at the trace in... Um, either of them, right? So we want the concavity of the trace. So we can look at xx or yy. You'll get the same result. Um, so xx at 1 comma 1 half is going to be uh, negative 1. We actually, so it's kind of an important point. Like you found partial xx when you did the calculation of d. So you can just like steal it. It's negative 1 for sure. Um, that is less than 0, which means the trace is concave down which means you must have a relative maximum. Okay, I'm going to be back in another video where I do uh, number 15 all on its own because it's a doozy. All right, so uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.